आई एम एट लस्सीपुरा पुलवामा इंडस्ट्रियल एरिया ऑफ कश्मीर एंड टुडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग डार्विन डे चार्लस डार्विन नोन फॉर मॉन्यूमेंटल वर्क ऑन एवोल्यूशन ऑफ स्पीशीज ही रोड द बुक ऑन द ओरिजिन ऑफ स्पीशीज in 9, 1859 and he was born on 12th february 1809 so today is the birth anniversary of great evolutionary scientist charles darwin so here we are seeing snow and the medicinal and aromatic plants like cyanara scolimus virginia ciliata Uh, rather this is virginia stretchii because in virginia ciliata the leaves should be round and they it should have the uh, white cilia or hairs on the leaf margins but if the leaf is not cordate rather it is cuneate base so it should be virginia stretchii commonly called as a rock Separator as this particular plant, which is perennial, has very strong roots which go deep into the rocks, and they have the capacity to break the rocks. So in Sanskrit, it is called Pashan Veda. Useful for uh, cosmetic products, even useful against ultraviolet radiation. damage uh leaves are edible they can be developed into snacks and this pashan vedha is in dogri called as sapadotri or katkotar in kashmiri language called as pahand or batmeva and this is under cultivation in lassipura herbal form uh managing director ceo shabir ahmed is very innovative manager and uh, i really appreciate the way these aromatic and medicinal plants stands introduced and the cultivation here so there are some other plants although only i am able to see the dried specimen now this is dry Pecoriza coro, but this has also put under cultivation here. Uh, we have the lavender. We have santolina, also, and uh, ajuga. Uh, this particular plant seems to be columbine, which is dried foliage now. This is aquilegia, columbine, from the family Ranunculaceae. Uh, we have other artemisia species here artemisia vulgaris artemisia annua locally called as tatwan uh, we have about 24 species in jammu and kashmir and uh, the unique species which is endemic to kashmir that's artemisia magdalena that i am not able to see in this herbal garden but i will request them to introduce to add the endemic artemisia from kashmir that is artemisia magdalena with willow like complete leaf otherwise in any uh, uh, artemisia species you see the leaves are much dissected but in case of artemisia magdalena no uh, divisions or no dissections are seen like this so it has a simple leaf and leaf looks like willow so it is also called as the willow leaved artemisia or viri tatwan in kashmiri language that is endemic and seen growing in gurej dahinala uh, limberla chipura kajinag it stands introduced in university of kashmir batanka garden i think that artemisia also need to be introduced at lassipura uh, herbal conservatory Uh, another artemisia which is unique to kashmir himalayas and seen at 
Chima post in Gulmarg of Rabat mountains. That is Aconitum, not Artemisia, Aconitum, Kashmiricum. Uh, that can also be included in this herbal garden. Achillea milliofolium, this particular plant, which is aromatic. So, Gyuthir, or Dada Peer the Jadi, as it is called in Dogri. So, that has also aroma, aromatic medicinal plant. That is also, I am able to focus in this Lassipura herbal garden now. Uh, another plant which is dried up now, Podophyllum. Ban Kakadi. This is Podophyllum hexandrum, now called as Sinopodophyllum hexandrum may apple or Denmo Kushu in Ladakhi language. It has a red fruit which is edible, but roots are medicinal, source of Podophyllotoxin used in cancer therapy. Uh, likewise, Econitum chasminthum I am able to see, but this is I think only uh, plate. I am not able to locate the plant. So, likewise, Econitum Kashmiricum, which is endemic to Kashmir, uh, it has the long stalked leaves and few flower, flowering inflorescence to distinguish it from another common species, Econitum heterophyllum, which where the leaves are stalkless, sessile, and the uh, uh, flowering spike is also much longer and contains more than 20 flowers. But in Econitum Kashmiricum, flower number is much less maybe about five to seven and the leaves are not stalkless rather they have long stalks so that way we can distinguish aconitum in aconitum chasminthum this is called a mori this is also used as a rodenticide so that is also there there is uh, also other species like uh, aconitum heterophyllum but unable to see the plant uh, here uh, Teraxacum officinale is another important edible and medicinal plant of Kashmir, locally called as Hand. It has a lot of uh, health benefits, even anti-cancerous. Uh, root can be pickled, uh, roots can be uh, made into herbal tea, uh, even flower tea is very uh, popular in the Europe. Uh, Teraxacum uh, species uh, uh, officinale, uh, Dandelion. Dugdafeni in Hindi, uh, Handri in Dogri language, it is seen growing around the lake Mansar, uh, that is there. So this is uh, another plant which they have, I don't know whether it can be grown in Kashmir, but they have written it as Dinospora quadrifolia, Giloi. So I wonder whether this climbing plant uh, seen in tropical and subtropical uh, climate can grow in Pulwama. So this need to be discussed. When experts will come, I would like to know whether they could grow this Tinosporo cardifolia. Otherwise, this is amino modulatory uh, climbing vine, very important medicinal climber. Juringa uh, dolomian, which is called Dupa, incense root. I am unable to see because this is the early uh, suffering season so the flowering or foliage is still uh, not in that uh, shape or where one can look at only the perennial bushes the green uh, this uh, uh, these uh, lavender and rosemary they are one can see so here it's a pam pam chalan or pambhak or rim rim emodi now also called as rim ostrate uh, which is an alpine herb and very sour in taste and it belongs to not weed family uh, Palgonesi so Rium Imodi is also uh, introduced in Lassipura herbal garden uh, another plant which is unique to Kashmir Himalaya is a critic in Nanjur is Arnibia Benthemi but again the plant is missing so maybe later I am able to locate it but it is locally in Kashmir language Gau Zawan. The name is the derived from the Persian name Gau Zawan means cow's tongue. As the leaves look like cow's tongue, that similarity has earned it the name as Gau Zawan and called as Gau Zawan in Kashmiri. And the same plant, or Nivya Benthim, is called as Ratanjot in Jammu Dogri language. It is unbranched perennial shaggy here uh, and it uh, looks like a, if candle is 
capture there. So this is has the red root. So it's also called a red rooted borage. Critically endangered plant. It also need cultivation. Uh, it is um, in critical endangered plant and cannot be exploited from the wilderness. So I think the cultivation is the only uh, answer. Uh, so that the germ plasma is conserved in the wilderness and it is also uh, conserved through access to conservation as well as whatever exploitation for local medicinal use or uh, industrial use. So the material should come from the cultivation. Uh, Digitalis purpurea is a very common plant. Uh, in monsoon season, we see its flowering, very ornamental uh, plant uh, with the pink purple flowers, also called the fox glove flowers. Digitalis purpurea uh, from the family Pedaliaceae uh, till Pushpi, which is called in Hindi, and this is uh, the source of uh, digitaline and uh, that uh, some alkaloids they are useful in the heart problems. So this is also I think stands introduced here. Uh, Angelo Angelica or Changelica again the plant from EPSC family I am unable to see but at least they have uh, mentioned its name. And Viola odorata is Banapsha Nunposh. So in this uh, Location, I am able to see the uh, preserved the snow also sheen. Otherwise, in Srinagar city, uh, the sh uh, snow has already melted. But in Pulwama Lassipura, in some shady locations, the s snow is still not fully melted, and still one can see the accumulation of uh, last week's snowfall. Uh, and these are the. Uh, uh, plants which uh, seedlings of the diodar that is called as Sidrus uh, diodara, the tree of gods. But one plant which I am able to see this is of Texas, which is called as postul uh, in Kashmiri language, anti cancerous uh, gymnosperm, uh, fruit with a red scarlet array. And this can be propagated through cutting also, although the survival percentage of cutting with the application of auxins is not more than 30%. And this is called Burmi Rukh in Dogri language and in Bhadrava at Subarnag, there is a sacred preserved Texas Valichiana tree, Burmi Rukh, and is worshipped by the devotees. Uh, on the day, one day before Besaki, when the um, closed door of Subarna, they are opened, thrown open for the devotees. So, this particular medicinal gymnosperm in Texas, in Balichiana, in Kashmir, we have Texas contorta, uh, otherwise, northwestern Himalayas, we have another species which is Valichiana. In Kashmir, as per the taxonomists, they say the species is contorta. And in northeastern Himalaya, there is another text which is unique and endemic to northwestern area and maybe some part of China also. That is Amento Texas, Asamicus, which is uh, Amento Texas, Asamicus means uh, catkin yew, Assam catkin yew. That is unique plant. Uh, and this Texas, which I am just focusing, this is also the relative of the same Amento Texas Samicus. Cedrus Diodara. Uh, we have another tree in Lebanon, which is called the Cedrus Labani, uh, national tree of Lebanon. And this Cedrus Diodara is the national tree of Pakistan. So its aromatic wood is a highly prized wood timber in the market. Uh, and this particular plant is included in the springtime planting uh, in Kashmir. So here also we see its plants. And uh, another plant which I would like to focus on, this is the rosemary. Uh, once it was called the rosemary of Hesinalis, but now you see that even in this early uh, spring, the honeybees, they are at work and uh, they are collecting the B4H and there are flowers also on this 
rose marinus officinalis but now the genus stands abolished and now this plant stands included under the genus solvia as solvia officinalis early later were called as the rose marinus officinalis or rosemary in english is a highly aromatic plant useful in cosmetics and healthcare products and uh, also used as tea uh, anti stress and uh, beauty of this particular plant is it attracts many honey bees who are attracted towards its flowers uh, and uh, i am able to focus the honey bee also in this morning so one can see the its uh, bushes are in flowering because spring is approaching very fast so rosemary or rosemary in its office in delis flowering has i think just started in pulwama uh, lasipura and uh, while remembering the contribution of the great evolutionary scientist charles darwin on his birthday today 12th february uh, how these plants have evolved and they are classified in different uh, kingdoms different there are uh, algae as bryophytes then pteridophytes then gymnosperms and angiosperms and but the basic chemistry of all these plants photosynthetic plants is same so dna uh, how dna is the behaving or how it is transcripted how the information of uh, one particular species is carried transmitted down the uh, progeny to the uh, uh, future generations that particular mechanism that is same so there is a unity of life although we see the diversity of life superficially but at chemistry level or genetic level at the at uh, you can say the uh, molecular level uh, there is a unity so while remembering the contribution of charles darwin uh, we know much more about the chemistry of life which is similar and honorable but uh, what about the original species still there are some um, mysteries uh, and there are some different hypotheses so there is a variation but variation is always not leading towards the evolution uh, of the species sometimes some kind of variant kind of uh, individuals they are selected by nature so there is some kind of uh, natural selection but then whatever variation is there that doesn't always lead to some kind of uh, variants or mutations or so uh, but always the uh, more the diversity more the adaptability in the change circumstances so we have the climate change and vagaries of weather uh, extreme events so definitely if we are able to uh, conserve our native flora that will be useful but in the industrial uh, uh, world uh, for the industrial applications we can grow the plants like rosemary and lavender uh, they are uh, cash crops they are highly uh, prized crops and to earn or supplement the income of the farmer or herb growers uh, lavendula officinalis lavender angustifolia or this rosemary and officinalis they are selected and they are promoted but these are not native to our uh, indian himalayas or kashmir uh, so uh, in wilderness in nature we should not introduce these exotics but in uh, cultivated forms and ornamental Uh, are herbal gardens where the motive or aim is to develop uh, some industrial bio products then obviously these plants can be used so we can see these are the melas uh, uh, the apple uh, but still no buds bud burst is not there but i am able to show you some leaves of these uh, flowers this is um, teraxacum i think teraxacum officinal flower hand so there is a kind of uh, change in the climate uh, early spring season 
Lassipura Herbal Garden we are witnessing and interacting with the experts this time.